vous aime. Do we have the English? Magnified, now say this together with me. Magnified and sanctified be the great name of God throughout the world, which he has created according to his will. May he establish his kingdom during the days of your life and during the life of all the house of Israel speedily, yes, soon, and say amen. May his great name be blessed forever and ever. Oh. Exalted and honored be the name of the Holy One. Blessed be he whose glory transcends yeses beyond all blessings and hymns, praises and consolations which are uttered in the world and say, Amen. May there be abundant peace from heaven and life for us and for all Israel and say, Amen. May he who establishes peace in the heavens grant peace unto us and to all Israel and say, Amen. You may be seated. We all know that Joss was a, a lover of music, and uh, so family thought this would be appropriate. This is a song that some of you don't know me. I was uh, part of Living Streams for many years, 10 years, and uh, um, I was worship leader during that time, and so we did a few Hebrew songs, and this is one that Josh liked. more music at the reception. I know uh, Scott Crispin and Steve Gentry are going to lead us in some songs at the reception area. Uh, we'll be out the back in, 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 in the gym. You know, Josh, Josh chose me to uh, a Messianic rabbi to officiate uh, at his memorial service because he wanted everyone to know that he was Jewish. That he was a Jew who believed that Jesus was and is the Messiah. He wanted the truth of the gospel to be proclaimed in its Jewish context. So you'll be hearing, as I share over the next few minutes, you'll be hearing his Hebrew name, which is Yeshua. Yeshua is the proper noun for salvation. So when a Hebrew speaker hears you talking to them about Yeshua, the Messiah, they might say, now wait a minute, you mean his name is salvation? And we say, yes, that's what Yeshua means. So for myself, my wife, our family, our Jewish friends, to hear Yeshua is it rings. It's why in Matthew chapter 1, when um, Joseph had the dream and an angel appeared to him and said, your wife will bear a son and you'll name him Yeshua because, why? You'll save his people from their sins. 
I also did Joshua's bar mitzvah when he was 13. So today we're here to honor Josh, but we're also here to honor God. You've heard about communion today a few times from Kurt and others. What is communion? I'll tell you, communion is Passover. Communion is what was Yeshua's last Seder. And what is Passover? What is communion? It's a story of freedom from bondage to slavery. Josh is no longer bound to the slavery of this life, to his to the physical body, but he's been set free. You know, we live in two worlds. We live in the natural world, and we live in the supernatural world. We live in the physical world, and we live in the spiritual world. God made us this way. You know, sometimes it's a conflict. Sometimes we're, we're conflicted between these these, these thoughts and these feelings, but that's the paradox. That's the dichotomy, the dichotomy that God created in us. So that we're, we're always thinking in this life about where do we come from, why are we here, and where are we going? You know, I'm amazed at people who don't ask those questions. I want to pinch them and see if they're breathing. Because for me, that, that was so important. And I was on a quest for truth. And I was looking for truth. And I found that truth is a person. Yeshua said, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father but by me. It's clear from Scripture that prior to the coming of Messiah, if you had a relationship with the living God, you would spend eternity with him. That's why the psalmist could say, precious in the sight of the Lord is the life. So in, in the book of John chapter 11, Yeshua's friend Eleazar, Lazarus, had died. His sister Martha, Martha in Hebrew, said to Yeshua, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Even now I know that whatever you ask of God, it will be given to you. Yeshua said to her, your brother will rise again. And she said, I know he'll rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Now, religious Jews believe in resurrection. In fact, if you've ever been to Jerusalem and you've been to the cemetery that's right on the Mount of Olives, looking, um, looking west toward the old city of Jerusalem, there's, there's the, a very famous Jewish cemetery there. And, and, the, and the graves, there's like a, um, a stone box above every grave. And on the side of every stone box is a little opening, a little door, if you will, at the bottom of it. Why is that? Because the religious Jews who are buried on, that, on, on the Mount of Olives, they know that when, when, when Messiah comes back, that they're going to be raised from the dead. And they make a little opening so it's easy to get out. Sounds funny, cute, it's the truth. And Martha knew about the resurrection on the last day. But Yeshua said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even if he dies. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? He said to her. And she said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of As believers, we are torn with mixed emotions. Sadness at the loss of Josh, but joy that he's in a better place with the Lord. I'm going to read you just uh, a few verses from the book of uh, Corinthians, um, written by a very famous Jewish rabbi who we call Rabbi Shaul, who also was known by the Gentile world as the Apostle Paul. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, he said this, Therefore we do not lose heart, but though our outer man is decaying, yet our inner man is